everybody, we're back. So today we're at home because we went to downtown Disney a couple of times and um, we've had enough of that for a little bit. Um, so we're gonna, we got some memorabilia. We're gonna take a little walk down memory lane and show you some stuff that we got and we've gathered throughout the years. We also have a couple bones to pick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Full disclosure, picking bones. we've got some issues. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna go over our issues and some memorial, memorial. Memorabilia. So we're going to go over <laughs> our issues and some memorabilia. And uh, yeah. So let's go look at our stuff and then get into some arguments. Let's go. So we're here. Going to do some memorabilia stuff. And, um, you know, we had a good weekend. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Yeah. It's Tuesday. We, you know, we hung out, we chilled, um, we celebrated a birthday. Celebrated Happy birthday, birthday Dana. Dana. Um, her birthday was on Monday, mm -hmm. so we went and you know we we gave, we dropped off some Disney presents. Yeah. Um, and yeah, other than that, it wasn't very eventful, which is always good for us. We have the wedding coming up in yeah. like two weeks. Two weeks. So we're so everything's on crunch time for that. Crunch time for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah gonna be a special day yeah. and i was thinking we might film a little of it to show our theme park gal fans the wedding yeah it's being live streamed so i wonder if we can take bits and pieces of the live stream like record it and then have lonzo insert it yeah we have all these ideas but it's up to lonzo to get it done because we don't know how to do that side yeah of we'll, we'll ask uh the bride and groom yeah. uh, if they don't mind if we put the link up there and if you guys want to go to Facebook and watch it live. Yeah. Watch it live. Yeah. It's going to be a beautiful watch ceremony. Watch a COVID, COVID wedding. COVID wedding. <laughs> Never been to one. No. Uh, but we have been to Disneyland and we've been to Disneyland a lot throughout the years. And we came across some some stuff that, uh, you know, we've, we've collected uh, throughout the years. I should have set aside that pass that I found. I just found yesterday we were looking through things my annual pass from 1996 and I stupidly put it back in the box I wasn't even thinking I did. oh you did uh -huh. Uh -huh. I put it okay. back in the box yeah but yeah we just found my pass at 96 I'm yeah. how old I don't even know but um, Indiana Jones but it was it was when it was good yeah. and you got pictures and different annual passes each year yeah so yeah, on your annual pass was little, cute little... Like, things. mine had Indiana Jones Mickey with, like, a torch. Yeah. Very cute. And then the newer ones were just one Mickey with a circle. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't anything fun about it. Yeah. You didn't get to pick anything. No. Um, so, I came across this stuff, and just the bag alone kind of excited me. I mean, look at this. Does anybody remember this bag? That, this is the bags. that is like well before they even Look thought about getting rid of Superstar Limo or even creating Pixar Pier. Yeah, and I wish they put the date on it. I know. Uh, but this bag is so cool. I'm glad I saved it. It's got both parks on it. Yeah. Obviously, probably back when uh, California Adventure first opened. Yeah, so that's, that's what, what I'm, I'm assuming. Assume. Um, so the bag alone really excited me because I was like, Man, you don't have these bags anymore. You have those ones that we've seen for a really long time. Yeah. Um, that is right over here. I'll grab while you grab something. And then we were going through and we found one of my name badges. This is from the year, the 50 years. Um, we found our cast member main entrance pass. Now, when I started working for the park, it wasn't hard plastic. It was paper that they stamped, they physically stamped the date in there, but yeah. then in 07, they went to the hard plastic. Yeah. So we found this. Um, and that was good for uh, the cast member yeah, this, and their family to yeah, get in. Yeah, pass holder and three guests. So many times. Yeah. yeah. And then we found this was when we stayed at the Paradise Pier. This was our room key. This was yours. Yeah, it's a hard, hard cover. Like a credit card. Yeah. And then I think you did put your credit card yeah. on. Because you, you could charge things this. to the room. Yeah. And then this is my Disneyland. Oh, what are you covering? My name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Disneyland cast ID. Yeah. 
She um, had her cast ID. Yeah, and there's the back of it. So yeah. supposedly the reason that they went from these to the blue ones is because, and I want to try it. If you scanned this at like a Target at the like price scanner, mm -hmm. your birthday and social security card, your social security number would come up. So oh. we should actually try that. Oh, yeah. Since I found I, this. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Um, came across this. I think there was like a cookie or something in it. But um, look how old that bag is. I'm going to say that was... That looks like early 80s, maybe. I don't remember that bag at all. Yeah, maybe even earlier. Um, but yeah, see like a cookie or something came in it. I don't, if anybody remembers, if you went during those times. I thought that was cool. Yeah. The and noise. then you think this is just a regular park hopper ticket. Yeah. But no. My friend Ryan won tickets to the Coast Holiday Party, um, mm -hmm. and he invited us. He yeah. won four, so he invited us. This was such a fun night. What year was that? Does it say? 2013. 2013. I remember that, um, that we got invited, and I was so excited, because I still today, you know, obviously not COVID yeah. year, but anytime a Coast uh, does the, you call them, it's our local radio station. Um, and you can win tickets. win tickets to their party. Yeah. Um, I never did it. Never won. But he did and he invited us. Yeah, and it he was invited us. It was so much fun. And I remember when we were leaving, we rode the tram right in front of us was Carrie Steele. And yeah. I wanted, she's one of the DJs yeah. at the radio station. And I wanted her autograph on the ticket so bad, but we couldn't find a pen. And then I didn't want to, you know, interrupt her. I'm just not that yeah. kind of person. Yeah. So. Um, and then we came across these. This is kind of what started um, me wanting to show everybody this um, because we have a few of these on our wall and I was like, wow, I think I remember we have several of these. So we, when you went to movies, because we, we don't do that here in California, um, we would go to Regal. And when, when you went on a certain day, Regal would give you like a hardcover uh, ticket. Or if you bought like a specific ticket. So if you went and yeah. saw the movie in IMAX or, or something like that. Or yeah. something like that. They give you a hardcover ticket. So here we've got a few of them that we saved. This was the Wreck-It Ralph Breaks the Internet one. Because I love Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah. And this one is, is so cool. This is the, you might have to hold the background up on it. I don't know. Here. Um, this is the Lion King one. Oh. Alexa, stop. This is the Lion King one. Look at that. It's like... There's a hole cut out in it. Yeah, see that? Put that down. You can. They'll be able to see it without okay. it. Yeah. See? That's pretty cool, huh? And these, what, what we like about these is they're all numbered. So like yeah. the Wreck-It Ralph one, this is number 500 out of 500. This is 79 out of 1,000. Yeah. Um, okay, and we have... Coco, we went and saw Coco. I think that one's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that one too. Um, this one is 379 out of 500. So that one's at the lower uh, numbered one. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, 30 out of 500. That was actually, that's the last movie, right? Sure. What's the last? Is this the last Star Wars movie? Maybe. Rise of Skywalker? Yeah. No, we didn't see that one at Long Beach. It says Long Beach Stadium. Hmm. Well, anyways, Whatever the last one movie we went to go see was a, the, star, the last Star Wars movie. And that was the very last movie we've ever seen. Um, This one, we got two different kinds. This is 282 out of 500. And so the, the difference is, if you look, this one's for IMAX. Mm -hmm. And then in Washington, I don't know if they have them here. They do RPX yeah. as well. So we got the RPX one too. Yeah. And Casey and I both really, really loved we that We saw this movie like four times. Yeah. Um, and we actually went to Disneyland before it came out. And they had the costumes there over where um, uh, Muppets 3D is. And so we got to see oh, yeah. the, and we went, the and, dress that Emma wore and yep. the beast. And then we got to see the introduction of it mm -hmm. at Muppets Vision. It was 20 and it minutes was in 3D. It was fantastic. I loved it. And I, they had me at the 20 minutes. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, was super fun. I'll show this one even though this is trash. Um, Pete's Dragon is one of my favorite movies. It's not trash. This version of Pete's this Dragon is. This is the newer is Pete's Dragon that trash. she hates. 
garbage. Um, I don't know if you guys all like Pete's Dragon, but Casey didn't like that one. She likes the original. Helen and Reddy. This one we, was so sad. We found it in yeah. one of our containers and it was kind of bent up. Um, it is sad. But I absolutely Moana. love that movie. It's a great movie. Um, we still watch it. Anytime it comes on Freeform. freeform. Um, and it comes on Freeform a quite lot. a bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the little collection of our Regal movie tickets. And that's just some, those are just our Disney ones. Like yeah. we have from Harry Potter, we have Fantastic um, Beast. Fantastic Beast. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. 007 ones, Allegiant ones. So we have other ones, but those are just the, the Disney yeah. ones that we could find. So I'm gonna go back a little further um, than, than some of you remember, but maybe some of you do. Leave comment if you do remember. Do, does everybody remember when Disneyland did the gift giver? No. Um, I think that was before your birth. <laughs> um, so he, this is a losing ticket because it says sorry on it right there. Um, but I went with um, the boy's uh, father and he won. He won a very large Mickey Mouse um Stuffy that we still have that we still have. Um, we were hopeful he was going to win the car because uh, they were giving away a car, but that day the car had already been given it away. So well, dang! But I mean, yeah. the stuffed Mickey. That's when Disney was good and was they so cared about fun. people. It was so much fun. I I really liked when they did that, the gift giver, um, because you could win anywhere from a pin to the stuffy. You know, and not everybody got picked, but it was the excitement that you could possibly get picked. And then you went up on the stage in the hub and you spun the big, huge thing and the, and the guy would announce. Really? Yeah, the guy would announce, okay, we have a spinner coming up. And you were up on the stage in the middle of the hub. And if anybody wanted to come and watch, they could come and watch. And he spun the big thing and it, and it has all the prizes on there. And, you know, you can see car. But before he spun, the guy said, we already gave away the car. Um, so it went tick, 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 tick. And I think it was like either the stuffy or I don't, I don't, I can't even remember what it was. Um, and it went poof, Mickey Mouse stuffy. And we were like, yeah, it was so cool. And then they just gave him a big, huge stuffy right there. They made him carry it around the park all day? We carried it around the park all day. We might have got a lo locker. I can't it remember. It was huge too. But that was exciting and it was fun. And I don't know if anybody remembers uh, those times, but I certainly do. Let us know if you remember that. That was exciting. And then going, oh, you know what? This one's a blast from the past too. That was yours. Yeah. This was, um, we made, um, my family traditionally, um, I, as I grew up from probably like 10 years old, I've been going to Disneyland. Um, my dad was in the military and then he retired and our big trip um, was we went to Disneyland and we would go to Disneyland Knott's Berry Farm, Wax Museum, back when it was in Buena Park, um, just down the street from Knott's Berry Farm. And we stayed in the Gas Lamp Motel. I remember that because that's the the motel that I learned how to swim in. It's not there anymore. It's not there anymore. It's not. It's gone. Um, and neither is the Wax Museum. It's in Hollywood now. Um, but we would go there um, yearly, three-day trip. Uh, but when my dad retired in the Navy, we went did our usual and then one day when I got like 18 years old um, we were all like you know we were working and stuff so we're like hey we'll pitch in a little bit how about if we stay at the Disneyland Hotel so we started doing traditions of every Memorial weekend Disneyland would have uh, Disneyland and all that jazz don't know if you all remember that, um, but it I was don't. great <laughs> because they had big name jazz performers. They, we saw Sarah Vaughn. Um, I saw Cal Jader. If you know jazz, you know these people. Muhammad Hat Sabar. I saw no Muhammad Hat Sabar. <laughs> there is no Muhammad Hat Sabar. <laughs> um, you know, Lee Rittenauer, big, big names would perform there uh, for the weekend. And you could just go around, and they, they were in different uh, locations. We saw Joe Williams at ben the... Ben Rames. No, that's an actor. <laughs> we saw Joe Williams at the um, Golden Horseshoe Review. And, and, man, it was just amazing. So we would do that every year. And I came across um, our Walt Disney Travel Company Magic Kingdom Club members, by the way. Um, and there's the receipt and, and the bookings. It was always during Memorial. 
it was during Memorial weekend. Um, and we would go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it was a blast. And I remember probably about 10, 15 years ago, I, e I emailed and, and wrote Disney and told them, you know, hey, why don't you bring back those kind of days, those kind of events? Um, because they were special to my family and we went every year and I got a letter back that, you know, Disney is changing too bad. So sad every day <laughs> and we have new and exciting things coming and I guess they didn't include COVID. Um, but they basically turned down my idea to bring that back, but it was, it was great times. So this is from May of 1987 for adults. Mm-hmm. $452 for their hotel and their tickets in the park. Disneyland Hotel. Yep. For for our three-day package. If only. Yeah. Like. Yeah. For it, real. Great, great memories on, on that uh, time. Um, and then we have, um, what is this one? What's this, this is one like from? a ticket. This was from 1992. Yeah. It says exclusively for guests staying at the Disneyland Hotel. It like gets you into, if you go up, it's a ticket. Queen Mary. Yeah, you got Spruce a special Goose. ticket that we didn't use because we were only excited and thinking about Disneyland. Nobody wants to go to the Queen Mary yeah. if they've traveled in for Disneyland. Yeah. It's 1992, folks. Um, and that's another thing um, I have right here. We we used to, because my dad was in the military, like I said, he used to be able to get um, special military, um, military day at Disneyland tickets. And... We would go and, you know, you get a special discount and a, and a lot of military people would be there. And, and again, I say bring that back because the parks weren't crowded and it was really fun. And this one is for five days. 51.50. Yeah. 51.50 for five days. And it's flex. Yeah. So you have to use the five days. Oh, it expires six days after stamped. Yeah. So, um, that's my memories. Any memories for you? Yeah. So we have Earth Day buttons that they used to give out. This one's from 2001. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I remember Earth, Earth Days. Um, and then we always maps. Oh, this is a haunt map. Yeah. Well, I 2009 that. haunt. Yeah. And this is the haunt ticket. Yeah. And this is 2008 right here. Yeah. But like Happy New Year 2012, and then we actually have two for the Happy Three for the Happy New Year 2011. Eleven. They have a Mickey and a Minnie yeah. one. These Mickey was for Cal Disneyland, and Minnie was for DCA. Yeah. Um, Sensational Parade, which was so good. Sensational. This one doesn't have a date. Oh, Mickey's Halloween party. Those. We this went was once. so much fun. So much fun. We went once and <clears throat> did they give you a bag or did we bring our bag? So mm -hmm. they give you like a plastic bag now. So when I was growing up, my stepdad <coughs> used to work at the park. He worked in outdoor vending and they used to do, now it's Mickey's Halloween party or Mickey's not so scary Halloween. It's Oogie Boogie's now. Oogie Boogie Bash, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. So it used to be Monsters on Main Street, Little Monsters on Main Street. Mm. And you would get a pillowcase that had like, it was always Huey, Dewey, and Louie were always on it, dressed up as whatever. But you actually got a pillowcase to walk around with. And this was- Where's yours? So my mom has most of them. One of them, I decided when we lived in Vegas, I was like a sophomore in high school. Me, my friend Jason, and my brother went out trick or treating and we got like, we were walking down the street and a car pulled up and snatched my candy bag and like almost broke my finger. <laughs> that's, so, that's candy napping. Yeah, some, this was like a car full of like, 
full grown adults. Wow. It was a pickup truck. So <laughs> one of our one of them is gone. In Las Vegas? Uh-huh. In Shame Vegas. Shame on you, whoever you are that did that. Yeah, and I was dressed as Gumby. That's been scary. It was. And I, you know, I just moved my brother away from the side of the road where they came up on and they took my bag. They didn't take anybody else's. But we were down the street from my friend's house whose mom was a nurse, so we just walked there and wow. they called our parents from Horrible. my mom from there. But yeah, so this is the bag of today that I wanted to show you guys that it's been out there forever. Ugh, I'm tired of it. Yeah. They need I, to change I really up. thought that, you know, like during the holidays they'd have a holiday bag. Yeah. But they make Fifty jillion of the bags, and then they're like, "Oh, let's just do them till they yeah, get keep, rid of them. Get them till they drop." So yeah, that was the bag. So a um, couple more things that we want to show. Um, yeah. If you guys all remember the Dream Fast yeah, Passes, sorry. we have two. Where's the other one? Right there. Your hand was on it. Oh, okay. Um, so this one's actually from 2006. This was 2008. But yeah, you would come off of an attraction and you would see a bunch of the Dream Squad people there and they would yeah. hand out so many of whatever. I think this one was given to one of the boys. The boys, yeah, probably. The 2008 one. That just sounds familiar. That we they, have a pair of they ears, They were able too. to get one. They got a couple yeah. things because we have a pair of ears, yeah. too. Um, but this one specifically, so um, in 2006, we were both still working at the park and cast members weren't allowed yeah. to get no. to, to partake in this and they would ask you before they handed it yeah to you are you a cast member yeah so um i used to hang out with three specific people all the time we were called the high five club it's a long story it was a great time but um we were at the park one day as guests and we were leaving Toontown. They were like, we're pretty much leaving for the day. If you guys want these, you can have them. And we were like, yeah, thank you. We never used any of the tabs. Um, but yeah, we got these. So that was that yeah. was fun. No, yeah, and those are nice to have. And Year A Million Dreams went on forever and ever. It did. Obviously, 2006 to 2008 and probably beyond. But those were the best firework shows. 100%. Especially with Julie Andrews. 100%. Voice. Um, they were the best. And Agreed. Fun. Agreed. Yeah. Um, the books. Oh, so Casey's friend, uh, Ryan gave us some of these books and this is like a find. This is the telephone directory for May, 2003 for the Walt Disney company. Look at that. There's phone numbers for the head chef of New Orleans squares at the time in there. There's phone numbers for each that. attraction. Yes. Um, it's great. I wonder if these still work. We should call some sometime. I know we should do that. Maybe we should go live and then call. See, look at that. Um, what a great find there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that was. Um, so yeah, so that's yeah. just a little bit of the, the memorabilia. We have so much more stuff. Yeah, we have so um, much more stuff. We'll save that for another time. Yeah. Um, but that's our memorabilia. Now we want to go into our little rant. Um, basically what everybody else is talking about. So. Okay. End of that segment. And we are joined by our editor in chief, up? Alonzo. Um, come on over here. Join yeah, us. Yeah, you're cropped out. Yeah. Um, so we want to talk about what everybody uh, has been talking about, um, and that's the projected um, possible annual pass um, levels that that Disney took a survey. Um, we did get the survey. But um, unfortunately, when I was doing the survey right in the middle of it, it popped up and said, uh, no, thanks. We've got enough. Um, and then I didn't get to take the survey to see that, that, that this part had come up. So there is six, seven. So too many people are reporting different things, <laughs> right? So some people are reporting that there's three. Other people are reporting <clears throat> that there's seven. Um, so we found the longest list and yeah. figured in that long list, there's probably going to be some truth. Yeah. And the other people that we saw their list, they had pieces taken out of this. Mm -hmm. They just didn't have all of the options. What that website were is this? This Daps. is Daps okay. Magic. Um, we can leave a link in the <clears throat> description if you guys want to check it out yourself. Yeah. Um, so according to them, um, there is a $13.99 passport. This is the, the most expensive one, right? Right. Okay. There's a $13.99 passport, and then we go $1,200, $9.99 passport one, 
$9.99 Passport, two, $7.99 Passport, $5.99 Passport. Are you already One. tired of it? Because I am. Uh, $5.99 Passport, two, $3.99 Passport. So that's the lowest. That's the lowest. Um, so let's start off with the $13.99 Passport. And try to keep up, will you? Because this is going to get real confusing real quick. <laughs> yeah, so, it, yeah, it is. It so is. I'll, I'll tell you guys what it says, and we'll let these guys try to explain to you what it means. Because I'm highly confused at all of it. So okay. this is the $1,399 passport. Now, these are just projected. This is not what's happened. Uh, pass holders can make up to six reservations at a time. Reservations can be made 90 days in advance, two block out day tickets are included, no anytime reservations included. Um, most of June, July, and weekends are blocked out. You get a 30% discount on merchandise, 10% on food, 20% discount for special event tickets, parking is included, max pass is not included, and photo pass is included. Um, there would be a dedicated entrance. Ooh, fancy. And there would also be a rewards program. What all this means, nobody knows. Um, so, Casey, what's your idea on all of this? The six reservations, the 90 days, the blockout dates. Tell us what you think. For this passport, from what other people are reporting, you're going to have basically June, July, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, New Year's blacked, blacked out. out. Um, my thing about this is I've gone through all of these and I think they're doing it this way to cause a little tomfoolery and this is why because in their previous pass holder structure the most expensive pass has given you the most premium passport you mm -hmm. get free parking you right. get free max pass you get um free photo pass yeah. you get you get it all 365 days 65, a year yeah. biggest discount all of it yeah so i think what they're trying to do is they're going to say oh well we have a 1400 dollars pass and a lot of the annual pass holders they're hoping are going to say oh this is the most expensive one this is clearly the best option mm -hmm. this is not the best option six reservations 90 days in advance yeah that's great but there's other tickets that make it to where from what we're perceiving you can go on the drop of a hat, which is what we really like. Mm -hmm. We were constantly like, oh, we're off work. Let's go to the park. Yeah. None of these passes really give you that mm -hmm. option no more. in a direct way, but yeah. there's little workarounds. This doesn't give you that. And we have the $1,200 pass. Um, the difference in that one from the, the $1,399 is instead of six reservations, you have two. Um, you get two anytime reservations. Did you even get, you get no any time on the 1300 or the 1400. Um, you get 30% discount on merchandise, 20% discount on food. That is a difference. Mm -hmm. Let's actually take those two and we'll compare those two um, right now because there, there's a lot going on. So we have the $1,399 passport that gives you six reservations at a time. This is how it is. It's... <laughs> And, and if they actually give them to us this way, this is going to be horrible. And that's what I said. I feel for the people who are going to be answering the phones because they're not, they're not going to know what to answer here. Um, it seems like between these two, the big difference is the more expensive one, the $13.99 one, you get a dedicated entrance and you're a part of some sort of rewards program. The, the discounts, I mean, very, you know, there, there's definitely a difference in the discounts, but it's not that huge of a difference. It all really seems like the special thing is this rewards program. Yeah. But they don't give you any information, any on, it. information on it. So no, it's it just doesn't some rewards say, program. oh, if you go X amount of times, you get... Are, are we talking t-shirts and pins? Or are we talking like, oh, Entrance you can into... get a day at... One night, night at the yeah. Disneyland like, Hotel. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think a lot is riding on this so-called rewards program that we don't know anything about. 
So the significant difference I do see is the 1200 gives you 20% discount on food. Um, and the, the more expensive 1,399 only gives you 10% discount. And, food. and this is, this is my confusion as well. Like I'm paying $1,400 for a past Disneyland and I'm only getting 10% discount on food. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're taking that, that percentage away because you're a part of the rewards program. Right. But no one knows what this rewards program even is. Yeah. So I'm, you know, and, and, and that's why I said like the discounts weren't that big of a deal to me because it's just, it's food. I mean, but yeah. you know, that is important, but I mean, why is a $1,400 pass only getting 10% on food? So I wrote down specific things. Um, I get that at the $1,400 pass, you can hold six reservations opposed to two. That I do think for people like us could be beneficial. Right. That's, is that the anytime reservation? No, no, no. This is. Oh, you can at a time. You at can a make time. any kind of reservation at, 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 at one time. time. Yeah. Right. On that's whatever cool. days you can go. So I think that's beneficial opposed yeah. to only being able to hold two. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of family from out of state. So I feel like that would be helpful to us in that aspect mm -hmm. because then you can say, oh, well, we're going to come down here. Okay. Well, we can hold this reservation. It's not going right. to prohibit us from going right. any other time. But. You don't get any, like, I, I like the anytime tickets, provided they are what we think they are, and right. it's, you can just pop in. Yeah. Provided it's that, I really do think that would be beneficial to us. I think two is a little bit of a, a shakedown. Slow, yeah. I don't like that. Um, I could care less about the merchandise, the 30% off merchandise. Yeah, that's nice and everything, but the mix too. we yeah. typically eat at the park more than anything. So the food merchandise is what I look at. We'll go just for that. Yeah. Um, parking. I get it, but $25 to park for people that are paying $1,400 or $1,200 is BS. That is a bunch of BS. I think that if I'm going to give you $1,000 up front, you could throw in parking. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I think if you want to take away Max Pass, fine. Take away Max Pass. Yeah. There's times where we could go to the park and say, you know what? We don't really need Max Pass. Yeah. We can just hold our one or two. Or Photo Pass. Take that away too. I don't care. No. But parking is killing me. Yeah. That's $25. Yeah. And if you go six times in a month, that's. Yeah. One hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Just to park. To be honest with you, because of where we live, it's gonna be cheaper for us to Uber there. Yeah. Uber or, there or and back. Walk. Okay. I understand that they're, they're throwing these out there and I don't know, maybe they're saying because I I didn't take the survey. If anybody had to take the survey, please let us know. Please comment. Um, did it ask you would you choose passport one over passport two on the nine hundred and ninety nine dollars? You know, would you choose a passport seven ninety nine, you know, what? I yeah, don't. Maybe these are maybe confusing. they're maybe they're like options. Like maybe yeah. they put so many out there because they're trying to say, here's all the ideas that we have. Yeah. What do you guys think? And maybe they're gonna choose like one or two out of that. Hopefully, yeah. because you know? I think the seven that they have up there are they're very confusing and and we would really like to know what the reward rewards program is mm -hmm. so what other people are speculating other vloggers other people on youtube social media that kind of thing they're anticipating three tiers the i'm rounding up i always round up so we're going to call it the fourteen hundred dollar pass the twelve hundred dollar pass and the thousand dollar pass okay now within these three three price points there are still four passes so they've completely removed the 799 pass the 2599 passes and the 399 pass which i think mm -hmm. is good because it just makes it all the more confusing yeah, it's just too much at the end of the day i think you have to take into account exactly what times are going to be blacked out which disney's going to have to figure out mm -hmm. because when we sat down yesterday and we were talking about all the passes and Originally, I was like, oh, well, we'll just have to get the, the, the $1,400 pass because in my premium pass holder brain, mm -hmm. I thought that's the good that's one. That's the good one. Yeah. But then as we looked through, I personally think for our family, at least, mm -hmm. the pass, the $1,000 number two passport is what works best for us. And that's because 
you get 30% um, off of food. Mm -hmm. And we go all, when we go to the park, we eat at the park. We don't leave to come yeah. home to eat. We don't bring food in with no, us. We eat at the park. We eat at the park. Um, it includes Max Pass. Mm -hmm. We cost, we like, we like that. Get rid of Photo Pass. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care about the dedicated entrance. I think that is just them trying to say, oh, we're throwing you a bone. I don't care if I wait in line with. Yeah. People that bought tickets for that day, I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. The thing that I really like is that you can hold the four reservations. You get six anytime and the one blackout day. So here's the thing. For us, we usually go to birth we usually spend birthdays at Disneyland. We do. Diane's birthday is December 30th. Provided December 30th is open, I don't know what not. We would pro we always go on New Year's as well. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact we would take that one blackout ticket, and that ticket is going to be dedicated for New Year's. And that's if they allow it. And that's if they if they no, don't they say have you a can't fine, use this. They have a fine print that says, "Oh, cannot be used on on holidays." I mean, and if they do that, now you're getting even more uh, complicated and confusing because now what they're saying is, annual pass holders, you are not allowed to go on holidays only people who are gonna come up to the ticket booth and buy a ticket. It, it, it is a, a good system in the sense of like, everyone has blackout days, everyone has to make a reservation. So I get it in that sense. It's like, why, if, you, if, you, if it was about the crowds, right? If it yeah. was about the crowds, right. why didn't they just cancel all the passes mm -hmm. And then reopen the passes whenever it was time to do that. Yeah. At the same price. Yeah. Get everyone who had passes before to buy buy in again, and just have res a reservation system just with a capacity like Walt Disney World had. I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the one that says it <laughs> because uh, before uh, all this came up, we said you know they cleaned the slate of the annual pass holders of the approximate 1 million pass holders. So the slate's clean now. And then what we were talking about is, you know, like, like what we did when we did the payment plan, you have to put down a, a down payment. So we figured, we calculated, oh, everybody would have to put down $200 uh, down payment. And that came to like $40 million that they got just right and off on down. And that's just on down payments. On down payments. So now with this system and nothing about payment plans are in here. Yeah, they didn't say anything about like no. being able to do monthly stuff. I don't know if that's I info, don't think info that'll do come, yeah. but and if they don't, so if you take an average, just say average, everybody gets the thousand dollar one. And that's a million people. That comes to over a billion dollars that Disney has just made on this new passport system. So don't tell me it's about us. Do not tell me you're structuring this so that everybody can come to Disneyland. You're doing this so you can get your million and a half dollars because you lost out on Disney and COVID, uh, Disneyland being open with COVID. And, and it, it's all about money. Yeah. That's all I see. Pop rocks or popsicle sticks, whatever the heck is that guy's name Kid is. Kid Rock. Sure. Pop rock. Pop Whatever. <laughs> he is trying to sit there and say, you know, oh, this is going to be better for everybody. Mm -hmm. You'll have value. Choice. At the and, end of the day, yeah. this is malarkey. Yeah. This is all a huge pile of rubbish. Yeah. What they should do if they're worried about, if they're worried about the sheer number of annual pass holders and not being able to, to make everybody happy, blah, 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 whatever. They need a two pass system. They need to have your premium pass where you can go every day. They need to do a flex pass. Yeah. Those two passes alone, you can even keep keep your premium at fourteen hundred dollars. That's what we pay. Yeah. Keep your flex thousand dollars for a flex pass. Whatever. But within those two systems, you need to live in the state of California on your physical ID, credit card, zip code, and mailing address needs to be in California. Isn't That's how, how it was? used to. Yeah, yeah. it used no. to be that way. Yeah. It, well, well, yeah, back now, in the day. But back in the day. It was. And that's the thing. If they made it to where only California residents can have these passes, yeah. 
it that there goes your problem. Ninety yep. percent of pass holders are locals, anyways. I mean, and and the thing is, is like, what does it benefit somebody who's lives out of state to uh, have an annual pass? I mean, yeah. it, you're. I mean, unless you're coming to Disneyland, yeah, quite a bit in the yeah. year, and you live out of state, yes. then yeah, sure, have an annual pass. But if you really only come to Disneyland like once or twice maybe out of the year. I don't think it's a uh, it's necessary for you to have an annual pass because you're no. paying a, a lot of money to so, have an annual pass. So basically <laughs> yeah. the majority of the people that have annual passes that live in let's say Michigan, I really don't think you're coming and going to Disneyland as many times as we are. Unless you so are, then I, I, mean, even, I mean if good you are you, you like, got the money you you can probably afford to stay at the the grand as many times as you come too. So. I could even put it out like this: if you're gonna have a a premium pass with complete access, 365 days a year, California zip code flex pass because my sister lives in Idaho. Mm -hmm. It makes sense for her to get a flex pass because she comes down two or three times a year. Mm -hmm. It would be cheaper for her to pay a thousand dollars. Say she comes down four times a year, she goes six times. So yes, it's cheaper for her and her family to do it that way. But if you do the flex pass that way where they have to pre-plan, you can pre-see who your people are when they're coming in. You could even do that same thing and do the premium pass on a reservation. So let me ask both of you, if Disneyland offered a premium pass for $1,400, okay, um, but they still have to like limit the people and they made you do a reservation system, would you be up for that? If I had the availability to say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna clock out of work early today. If they said you, you can do same day reservations for half a day, and I mean, yes, that's a chance you take that maybe they say no, that they're, they're not available, I would. I would pay $1,400 for 365 days a year with the availability to drop in. I don't have a problem making a reservation for a weekend. I don't have a problem my sister's coming down for the wedding. If Disneyland was open, I know we'd go a couple days. Mm -hmm. I would put in that reservation. Oh and and like you, you still you have to make reservations yeah. and everything. Yeah, for yeah. sure I'd do that. I would do that because if of I, COVID, if I, you know. Yeah, I mean if they I have had, to have some kind of control. If sure. I had the access to go whenever I wanted, mm -hmm. but I had to make a reservation, mm -hmm. yeah, I would. And I'll tell you what, that's exactly what they're doing at Disney, Disney World, World right now. And I know this because I spoke with somebody, another vlogger who goes to Disney World constantly, and I asked them, hey, are you guys doing a reservation system? I thought you weren't doing a reservation system. And they said, no, we are doing a reservation system, but it's more readily available, meaning they can make same day reservations and they aren't at full capacity. They're at limited capacity still, but they can park hop. So why can't we do that here? <laughs> like, yeah. like, I mean, I'd, I'd be willing to pay the $1,400 for a pass, and have to do reservations with a limited capacity, but knowing that I can make a reservation whenever I want and go whenever I want. Yeah. I don't know what the difficulty of that is to do here. Tell you like it is, um, and and Disney's uh, hopefully gonna tell us how it is. I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll give more information. It's yeah. just it's it's a bit frustrating how it they is. roll it out and they yeah. say. Okay, here's a little, here's a crumb for you. Here's yeah. a little crumb well, for and you. And I speculate. And like, then the problem is, is they give you minimal information that they get. They want, they want this. Right. They want this hype because at the end of the day, any publicity is good publicity for them. Right. So I mean, good, bad, regardless, whatever. I I think they're not doing the pass holders right. I believe that they should. Um, be giving the pass holders that have been with them for a really long time more than they are. Yeah. Instead of ripping out our hearts and saying, here's some chewed up gum. This is what we might give you. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so with all that, yeah. um, like Alonzo said, we will uh, put the link for where we got our information from. In the bio. Um, in the bio. And obviously, like we said, this is not all... Um, etched in stone um it's just ideas um but i think the ideas that they threw out there right now are very frustrating to a lot of people because they're confusing they're it's trash confusing. yeah it's garbage it's too convoluted yeah. information they need to compact uh, uh what they're saying 
and then explain to us what what it all means. And um, they need to not try to spin it of look at what we're giving you. This is this is look at we are being so nice by granting you four reservations at a time that you can make 90 days in advance, yeah. but you have to pay $25 to park. You don't get a max pass and you don't get photo pass. Yeah. But we're giving you this. Yeah. So, so with all that and all of our frustration, um, we, we hope you guys can understand everything that was said. And we do love Disney. Yeah. Like just to, just to clarify. Well, I mean, it's obvious we've been going you for, know, for cent a century. Disney is a huge yeah. part of our life, but yeah. Knott's Berry Farm and Universal might have to become a big. But we're not gonna, now. we're not gonna take your crap, Disney. That's right. Um, anyways, with that being said, um, uh, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to click, subscribe. Click. click that little click, click button wherever ding, 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 it is ding. on the screen. Uh, tell your friends about us. Say hey, check out those theme park gals and their editor Alonzo. Um, <laughs> they're kind of fun. Um, and they get angry sometimes too. So, I mean, don't we all? So Alexa, stop. So with so all rude. that, we have our movie quote and our movie quote is from Brave, one of my favorite movies. And Merida says, our fate lies within us. You only have to be brave enough to see it. Bye everybody. Bye.